Hello and welcome. In this video, we will show how you can perform a two-sample z-test using Excel. A z-test is a statistical tool in hypothesis testing to test the mean of a distribution when the variances are known or the sample size is large. Generally, we can speak of a large sample in these kind of settings when the sample size n is larger than or equal to 30. Under the null hypothesis, the test statistic is approximately normally distributed. On this sheet, we have 30 observations of the average resting heart rate of athletes and 50 observations of the average resting heart rate of non-athletes. The question is whether or not there is a significant difference between these two. To test this, we state our null hypothesis H0 as the average heart rate of the athletes stated by mu athletes equal the average heart rate of the non-athletes stated by mu non-athletes. The alternative hypothesis is then mu athletes is not equal to mu non-athletes. Before we can perform the test, we need to know the population variances of both groups. Since we have independent and identically distributed observations, we know that the sample variance converges to the population variance. So when our sample is large enough, and this is the case when we have 30 observations or more as indicated in the introduction, we can substitute the sample variance for the population variance. Hence, we first compute the sample variance. This can be done by using the function var.s, which computes the sample variance of a given range. We want to compute the sample variance of the heart rates for both athletes and non-athletes. So first we enter the range A3 till A52. Then we copy this formula to the cell below and substitute the range by B3 till B32. Now we are ready to do the z-test. We navigate to data and select data analysis. A menu opens where we scroll down to z-test to sample for means. We select this and press OK. Here we have to enter both variable ranges. Variable 1 is the average heart rate of non-athletes in range A3 till A52. The second variable is the average heart rate of athletes in range B3 till B32. To fill in the hypothesized mean difference, we have to look at the null hypothesis. We assume that both means are the same, which is the same as saying that the difference between them is zero. We just computed the variances of both variables. The variance of the first variable is 131, and that of the second variable is 899. We did not include the labels in our variable ranges, so we keep this box unchecked. Next we have to enter the level of confidence for our test. This is automatically set to 0 0.05, which corresponds to 95% confidence level. This is a commonly used level, so we keep this. Finally, we choose where the output of the z-test should appear. We put it on the same sheet in cell D12. The first half of the output table summarizes the variables. We see the means, the variances, number of observations. Next we see the hypothesized mean difference, the value of the test statistic C, and the p-value and critical z-value for a one-tailed and two-tailed test. The difference between a one- and a two-tailed test is shown in the graphs next to the table. A one-tailed test is where you are only interested in one direction. If a mean is x, you might want to know if a set of results is more than x or less than x. In a one-tailed test, we therefore reject the null hypothesis when the test statistics value is higher than the critical z value, or rather lower than the critical value, depending on what you are interested in. In a two-tailed test, we look at both ends of the distribution, and we will reject the null when the test statistics value is smaller than the lower z value or higher than the upper z value. The lower z value is the negative of the critical z value given in the table, since the standard normal distribution is symmetric around zero. Remark that the yellow area covers 5% and each blue area covers 2.5% to sum up to 5 in total. If you would like to see an example of the application of a one-tailed test, you can watch our video called One Sample Z-Test in Excel. Here we are interested in the two-tailed test as we want to test if both means are equal or not, and not only if one is higher than the other. We observe that the test statistics value is higher than the two-tailed critical Z value, so we reject the null hypothesis of both means being equal. Hence we can say that the average heart rate of athletes differs significantly from that of non-athletes. Another way to conclude this is by making use of the p-value. 
p-value for the two-tailed test is 0 0.002. This value is smaller than our confidence level of 0 0.05, so we conclude to reject the null hypothesis. This concludes our video on two-sample z-test in Excel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software-related tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.